Today I've got this Samsung 61 inch DLP and if if you know anything about me you know I am a fan of the DLP technology. I like the richness of the colors and the smoothness smoothness of the picture. I think it's great. In fact uh, if you've seen my Mitsubishi DLP light tunnel repair you'll know I have one myself in my living room. Uh, anyhow this one is a the model HLR6167 and um, it's got the classic problem. I did a video on replacing the RAM chips on the digital board. I believe it's a BP94-2084A. Uh, but what if you don't want to get that involved and you just want your TV to work? Um, these series, this is an R series set and so it has what I call the second generation DMD board if you have the L3 engine and of course you may have the L6 engine and uh, technical details of course you can get into the differences between the L3 and the L6 the L3 uses a uh, BP96-00826 lamp and the L6 uses a BP96-01073A lamp um, there are different manufacturers the uh, one that uses the 1073 lamp is actually built by Samsung the optics are built by Samsung the DMD is built by Samsung uh, the one that uses the 826 lamp, the optics are built by Zeiss. But that's just technical details. They both produce uh, a very good picture. They are only 720p sets. Um, if it's an HLR6168, then that was a 1080i set. And of course, if once again, fine details. You get into the difference between I and P. Uh, not terribly much. In fact, the human eye, um, unless you have them sitting side by side, most people would never be able to tell the difference between 30 frames per second and 60 frames per second. Uh, nevertheless, let's talk about uh, this HLR series set, 720p. Uh, this one does have a bad digital board, and it was donated um, for recycle. And I happen to have uh, several of the HLP series Samsung DLP sets that uh, I've scrapped out and the HLP was the first generation of the L3 chassis and I've had quite a problem with uh, digital or excuse me DMD boards going bad in these sets so uh, I'm going to keep the optical engine out of the HLR set but I'm going to try to transfer all the other components over from the HLP series because they're all working fine it's just I've got uh, um, a bad uh, engine, a bad DMD board, so I'm not going to use that anymore. So I just wanted to talk to you about uh, trying to do this swap out and let's get the 61 inch set back up and running and uh, maybe we can make somebody happy with it. Okay, so I've got the back off of the set. I've taken all the screws out of the engine as well as out of the power supply board. Um, everything's going to come out of the back of this set, so I'm going to pull the digital board out just enough to disconnect the little thumb screws that hold the LVDS cable in place. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the cables from the engine to the analog board which is part of the digital board assembly here. Um, let's see, one screw, I'm going to take this one ground screw loose over here ground wire unplugs from the top of the tuner. Uh, I don't know if you can catch it on the camera, but all of these plugs will be unplugged. Remote sensor as well as the power supply. These two cables go over to the power supply board. All of this stuff gets completely disconnected. Digital board gets taken out and set aside. Remove the uh, connector from the power supply to the ballast. Go ahead and leave these connectors on the light engine and we're going to reuse this light engine. But I'm just going to pull the whole engine out of the set just to make things a little bit easier. I'm going to go ahead and remove the connectors from the power supply. And I'm going to just take these wires completely out of the set. We're not going to reuse this wiring harness and I'm just going to set those aside. Next I'm going to go ahead and pull the power supply board out of the TV. 
disconnect the connector from the three prong connector. And the only thing I'm going to reuse off of this power supply is this metal uh, bracket that goes on the circuit board. I'm going to go ahead and take that, removing these three screws right here, and take this bracket off the power supply. I'm not going to reuse this old power supply. Okay, so here's the parts that you're going to need out of the HLP series set if you want to do this changeover. Uh, this is the the uh, jack input board. It also is comprised of the digital board as well as the analog board. This is the power supply board out of the HLP series set. You'll need the connector that goes to the ballast as well as all the wiring harness out of the HLP series set because the HLR series uses a different wiring harness. Some HLP series sets have an AC input board. Some don't. It is a redundant design because as you can see it is built onto the main power supply so it's almost a carbon copy of what they built onto the power supply. I think they use this in early production sets but not in late production sets. You'll need the ground wire off of the old set. This is off of the HLR series set because you're going to use that as lightning protection. Now one drawback about doing this changeover is the HLP series set does not have a digital tuner. So if you're receiving over the air digital channels or cable digital channels, you won't be able to do that any further. Um, you'll have to get a over the air converter box or have cable or satellite. Okay, so to make this fit, remember I said you'll have to save this old metal shield off the old power supply. Um, it will fit right onto this power supply. The holes line up and everything just like it was designed for it. Okay, so one thing you're going to have to do when you do the changeover, uh, the HLR series set uses a three pin power plug with a separate ground lead. Uh, the HLP series used a just a two prong, two wire AC cord and it had a little molded connector that went on right here. So what you'll need to do, and what I've always done in the past, I've done a couple of these sets now, is uh, just cut off this one connector. And you can just solder the wires onto the board. They are labeled. There's an N, which stands for neutral. And the neutral on this one is blue. So make sure you solder the blue to the neutral, solder the brown to the other side over here. Okay, so I've got my uh, AC input plug soldered to my AC input board. Like I said, just make sure you pay attention to the N for neutral. Make sure the blue wire gets attached to the neutral and the brown wire gets attached to the live. So I've got my power supply board in the set here. I don't have a little ground clip on it yet, but I just wanted to show you. Hopefully you can see it up inside the TV here. Even though this specific model, having to hold the camera, even though this specific model didn't have an AC input board, it does have a place for it up in here. Now you'll have to just either cut these off or, or move one of them out of the way. But you can see up in here there is a slot, well, maybe not from the camera, but there are slots for this little AC input board to slide into. And then there's a place to put a screw on each end to hold the board into place. Okay, so next we'll connect all the rest of the cables to the HLP board. You'll see that they all plug in the same exact connectors. There's really, uh, they didn't change much between these two years. Oops. There's the side keypad. This one's the remote control, I believe. No, this one's the remote. The other one were the LEDs on the front of the set. Connect the power supply cable that you salvaged out of the other set. So I forgot to tell you before I put the power supply back in that the ground wire that we salvaged runs from this connector. This is the AC input off of the little AC input board to the main power supply. The ground wire will run from that, and the other end has the ferrite bead on it, and it will run over to this little connector that is, see if I can show it now, right behind 
the antenna connectors on the analog digital assembly. And this is the engine out of the HLR set. This is the original engine out of this TV. And we'll try to get it to fit in here. It's always a tight fit on these sets. Just got to make sure that the all the wires clear up here. And I like to tuck these kind of back in here so the lamp door and everything doesn't get in the way here. Next I'll connect these two cables up to the uh, analog digital board here. Hopefully you can see it on the camera. I don't know if you can or not. The LVDS cable. Conveniently it's in the same exact location as the old HLR series digital analog assembly. It'll go into place. There's a couple little pegs. You can always be sure if it's lined up correctly. Um, make sure you keep this clear of the fan that you kind of tuck them back out of the way. Connect the ballast power supply. They'll fit down in these two little slots. Try to keep the wires as low as you can. Um, the customer broke off the screw on this on this one, but as you go to put the lamp in, sometimes if those wires are hanging up high, the lamp connector will catch on those. And um, I think we're ready to give this thing a try. Make sure if you don't put the back on it that you, what I call trip the safety switch. I just wrap the wire around it Otherwise, the set won't run unless you defeat that little safety interlock switch. So I'm going to apply power to it and fire it up, and we'll see what we get. Okay, I've got my set uh, all put together, up and running. Uh, just a note, uh, be very careful about uh, the power supply circuit board and the excess lead length. As I was uh, putting light engine in, I noticed uh, the first time I fired it up, I had to check the fan message on the screen. and. One of the leads had gotten into the fan, keeping it from rotating the lamp cooling fan. So I had to pull the uh, engine back out and redress those wires back there. But anyhow, got that all taken care of. And everything looks awesome on the TV, just one small problem. Uh, unless you want to turn the TV upside down or stand on your head to watch it, uh, the picture is upside down. So let's, uh, let's go into the service menu and turn the picture around. Okay, so start with either the TV off and cool, or if you do it quickly enough, remember, original Samsung remote or any Samsung remote, you need the mute button. Mute, the number is 182 and the power button. So let's try to do this. The lamp will stay lit after I press the power button for about 10 seconds. And we want to enter these commands within that time frame. So uh, power off, mute, 182 power. Try to do it at about that speed and you should be good. There we are. We're up in the service mode. So I'm going to go into uh, the first one listed. Everything's backwards and upside down now so um, I'm going to go down to vertical flip. I'm going to select flip. Press menu. I'm going to go down to horizontal flip. I'm going to select flip and now my picture is right side up. Everything looks great. Uh, next I'm going to go uh, into index delay and I'm going to check my color wheel index. Uh, this one does not put up the color wheel uh, index bars but you can use the red bar at the bottom. I try to I adjust this. Oh, I have another Samsung behind me that decided to come on. I adjust it each way until I see the bar distinctly change color. And as you can see right there, it's very uh, purplish, pinkish. It turns red, and it stays red at about 45. As I go the other way, it's going to turn orange and eventually green. So I get a good red at about 50. So I really think about 45 is about the optimal adjustment on this one. The other thing that you can look at, I don't know if I've talked about this on other models, 
Uh, if you go down here to where it says SP actuator, enter the actuator, go into actuator gain, and it puts up these little uh, patterns on the front of the screen. Let me move the camera and get right up close to it and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so I've got a close-up view of the white test pattern and the actuator gain is set at 113 right now. So I'm just going to adjust this actuator gain till it's way off and you can see how jagged the test pattern becomes. So basically all you need to do is adjust it until you see the absolute smoothest picture. If I go too far the other way, it becomes jagged once again. So that looks like it's about as good as it's going to get. We're at 97 right now. Just a real quick note of what the actuator does is if I turn the actuator off, then you can see the little individual DLP squares each micromere you can see is a little diamond in the screen because they have them organized diagonally. If I turn the actuator on, what it does is there's a little mirror that is vibrated at 60 hertz. So it offsets every other frame so the human eye uh, perceives this picture as being one steady state. It's actually uh, jumping up and down at 60 frames per second. Not much more to talk about on this set. The only other thing to look at is the lamp life. And of course, since I used a different digital board in this set, it, it knows not what the actual lamp life is. So I'm going to select lamp clear in the upper left hand corner. And as you can see, lower right hand corner, it says the lamp life is 16,083 hours. And so I'm just going to clear that back to zero. Everything else looks absolutely great on this model. You could look at the uh, vertical and horizontal position uh, just to make sure the picture is centered, is centered. This one does not put up a test pattern as some of the other ones do. But uh, to exit the service mode, just simply turn the set off. Wait for the melody, turn the set back on, and you'll be out of the service mode back into regular TV. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Everybody have a great day. Remember, you can follow me on Twitter, NorCal715. With your help, we can keep a few more of these TVs out of the recycle bin and out of the landfill. Everybody have a great day. Bye-bye.